Nuptial flight season, the time of year every ant keeper is waiting for. The period when young queen ants land on the ground in search of the ideal place for them to nest and start an ant colony to continue their species. For many ant enthusiasts around the world, the duration of queen ant nuptial flights feels like Christmas. But similar to that holiday, the mating season of ants also happens only once a year. That's why, if you are looking forward to find and catch your first queen ant, you need to keep your eyes open so you don't miss any queens you come across. By the end of this video, you will know what queen ants I have found this season, where I caught them and what their traits are, so you can decide if you want to start keeping them as your pets. Welcome to the Ants Vienna Ant Channel and let's get started! Ok, so whether you are a beginner in ant keeping, looking for possibilities, an experienced fellow who wants to widen their collection of various interesting ant species, or an ant lover who can't wait to catch the first queen ant, I promise you will enjoy this video and hopefully learn more about ants. Before we get started, let me just say that this year has been a strange and harsh one, since the weather has been constantly and quickly changing. The frequency of natural disasters has increased and we humans are not the only ones suffering. Due to high temperature fluctuations, ants are also confused. So I found that nuptial flights happen irregularly and unexpectedly this season. This made it hard for me to find queen ants. So a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated. Now, those of you watching my videos all the way to the end will already know that I managed to catch a queen ant as I was taking some pictures for my Utong ant farm build tutorial. However, I didn't reveal much about the species. So, let's have a look at that queen ant. Here she is, a beautiful brownish red queen ant with a couple of distinct spikes on her back. To my knowledge, this should be a Myrmica rubra quinant. These ants are also known as the European fire ants, since they are one of few species on the European continent that have a sting that can pierce through the human skin and cause pain. Apart from their sting, these ants are also very aggressive and love moist habitats. So, if you plan to keep a Myrmica rubra colony, make sure to water their setup frequently. Also, unlike most species I've encountered, Myrmica queen ants are semi-claustral, which means that queens do need to leave their nest and search for food during the time they raise their young and first set of workers, the nanitics. So keeping them in a closed test tube might not be the best solution. You should rather place the queen in a small outworld with an open test tube for better chances to start a colony. Have you kept Myrmica rubra? Since it's my first time, I would appreciate any keeping tips you can give me in the comments below. Let's move on to the next queen ant species I found this year. Formica cunicularia. Whoever watches my videos regularly knows that I am a big fan of formica ants since they are somewhat larger than lasius ants and still easy to keep as many of their specimens are fully claustral, meaning that the queen ant does not need to leave the nest she digs in ever again. Rather, the first generation of workers is grown 
by metabolizing the queen's no longer needed wing muscles and fat storages. Since I have been keeping a Formica cunicularia ant colony for years now on this channel, I link you the corresponding playlist on an info card so you can check them out if you want to know more about these ants. Unlike my neighbor, I was positively surprised when this was revealed to me. Look at all those ant alates! Alates are young, virgin queens and male ants, also known as drones. They are all on tension, probably waiting for the perfect day or hour to fly off their original nest forever in order to mate. If you happen to see ant clusters like this, it is best to leave them as virgin queens won't lay any eggs but rather die instead if you put them in a test tube. They seem to be Lasius emarginatus ants, since I see many of their workers foraging in my area. These ants are also known as house ants, since they like to nest in stone and wood, so they are often paying a visit in people's kitchens and live in house walls. Anyway, we put everything back in place and, since my neighbor agreed not to kill them, I was able to find another Lasius emarginatus queen that had shed her wings a couple of days later. And I say another, since we are already keeping a Lasius emarginatus colony on the channel. If you want to know more, you can check them out here. On the same day, I also encountered a Lasius niger quinant. Since these ants are a perfect all-rounder species for beginners, I went ahead and collected her. This way, if a friend wants to get in the hobby, I am happy to help out. In a nutshell, Lasius niger and their American counterpart, Lasius neo niger, are in my opinion one of the best ant choices for beginners due to multiple reasons. They do not have special housing, feeding or temperature requirements and are fully claustral, which means it is easy to start a colony. And when you start a Lasius Niger ant colony, you always have something to watch, as this species is very aggressive and territorial, which makes them very active on the surface especially when the colony grows bigger. One important thing I have to point out though is that they are subject to hibernation. So the ants will enter a free state during the winter months. However, let me tell you that I have come to really appreciate that break due to all the colonies that I am keeping. My own Lasius Niger colony is now over three years old and on the rise again. You can check out my last update video on them here. Now, unlike Lasius Niger, Lasius umbratus is a socially parasitic ant species, which means that this queen needs to infiltrate a host colony of the Lasius genus, usually Flavus or Niger, kill their queen and take over. The workers of the host colony then come to accept the Lasius umbratus as their new queen and work for her. I find this takeover scenario hard to recreate in captivity and personally failed to do so last year. As such, I do not recommend this species for beginners. Have you succeeded in keeping Lasius umbratus? If so, feel free to give me tips in the comments below. I read and answer them all. Also, if you are enjoying this video and find it helpful, hit that thumbs up button so it can reach and help even more fellow ant keepers. Now, let's get to a couple of special cases. A paradox ant species are Formica rufa. While the young, 
parasitic queens of these wood ants are very fast, aggressive and have excellent vision, the species itself is on the red list and protected by law in many European countries, including Austria where I live. So, when a friend caught a queen for me the other day and I identified it as a Formica rufa queenant, I explained the situation to her and we agreed on a spot to let this beautiful, glossy creature free. We also offered her a drop of honey water for her trouble and as a boost for her journey. Don't think we're done yet, as the encounter we'll talk about now surprised even me. An even more unique and rare creature happened to cross our street a few days ago. It was moving so fast that I was unable to film it until I caught it. Due to its anatomy, I was sure it was an ant, but I had never seen anything like it. Let me show you some pictures. I have also posted these on our Queen identification channel over our Ants Vienna Discord server, which you are free to join by the way, link in the description below. Over there, one of our moderators helped me by identifying this thing as a Polyergus rufescens. After some research, this is what I found. These are indeed ants, but not just any regular ants you get to see. They are called Amazon ants, and that due to their nature to raid other ant colonies and steal their brood. In particular, they only steal pupae from Serviformica species. Believe it or not, these ants cannot even feed on their own. Instead, they enslave other ants who in turn feed them via a process called trophallaxis, where one ant offers food from its social stomach to another ant. Furthermore, Polyergus rufescens colonies can be composed up to 90% of enslaved ants, while the true Amazon ants only make up 10% and their only duty is to raid, even multiple times a day, to keep their numbers up. Since Amazon ants are so rare and cannot reproduce on their own without having enslaved ants feed their brood, it comes to no surprise that they are an endangered species with their numbers constantly shrinking and being threatened by extinction. So, while I was very lucky to come across this specimen, I ended up releasing this Polyergus rufescens queen only hours after I caught her and hope she manages to keep her unique ant species alive for generations to come. Did you find this little discovery exciting? Which of the species we talked about today is your favorite? And did you catch any quinans this season? Let me know in the comments below, I am curious what you guys think. If you want to know more about catching quinans or need help to start your ant farm, make sure to check out the videos that appear on your screen right now.